We are going to look at the structure of an atom. Atoms are composed of three fundamental elements, a proton, a neutron, and an electron. Protons have a positive charge, neutron are electrically neutral, and electrons have a negative charge. At the center of an atom is the nucleus. The nucleus is composed of a proton in the most simplest of atoms or a collection of protons and neutrons in more complex atoms. Let's start with the simplest atom, hydrogen, which only has a single proton in the nucleus. You can think of the nucleus as being similar to the way the Sun behaves in our solar system. It's at the center and orbiting around it is much smaller objects, in this case the electrons. So the electrons with their negative charge are attracted to the positive charge in the proton and that's what holds them in orbit. In the case of hydrogen you have a single positive proton orbited by a single negative electron. Now a more complicated element is helium. Helium has in its nucleus two protons, but because protons have a positive charge, and like charges repel, two positive protons in the nucleus do not want to be there together. That's where the neutrons come in. The neutrons help to hold the nucleus together. In the case of helium, it has two protons and two neutrons. Because you have now two positive charges in the nucleus, it has the ability to hold in orbit two electrons. Now when I draw these orbits, the, where the orbits are located is very specific to the element. Because of the physics of the electric charge and the forces that it creates, only certain places in orbit around that nucleus are permitted. And for every element, those permitted orbits are very unique. And why this is important is because unlike planets going around the Sun, electrons going around the nucleus can change orbits. Electrons prefer the orbit closest to the nucleus. That is the lowest energy level. And that is the preferred location. To change orbits, the electron either needs to gain energy to move out, or it needs to lose energy to move in. How much energy it gains has to exactly equal the size of the jump in the atom. How much energy it loses exactly equals the size of the jump in the atom. And because only certain orbits are allowed, only certain amounts of energy can be gained or lost. And that is what will lead to the kind of spectral lines you see for different elements. And that is the next lesson.